Last week in the Tohoku region, I had the privilege of seeing how Japan weaves age-old traditions with modernized innovations, from an observation of respecting fallen heroes to a whimsical lesson in art to a whole lot of cats, all the while traveling in style aboard the mighty Shinkansen. Arguably known as Japan's central region, Kanto is the country's largest plain, with a name that literally means east of the border. Today, it is home to Japan's seats of government as well as densely populated metropolises of Tokyo and Yokohama. But those cities are areas that are mainstream in the global masses, and I wish to explore the more indie parts of Kanto, starting with a trip to Gunma Prefecture, to the northwest of central Tokyo. I cannot wait to see what else Kanto has in store for me. I've been on the road for about a week now here in Japan, and I got to remember to myself that uh, actually it's a very long journey that I'm on, so I'm going to take the time to reinvest in myself. So I think this place is a perfect opportunity to find somewhere where I can rejuvenate some of that energy that I've spent. More than anything though, I need a good bath. Venturing into Kusatsumachi territory, I see steam rising and murmurs of tranquility. Now you know you've come into a town which is famous for its spas when there's a slight egginess to the air. And of course that's due to the epicenter right here. This is the heart of Kusatsu. And uh, it's where all of that hot water comes out from the earth and is fed into the onsens all around this town. And the great thing about it is, if you do let one off by accident, no one's going to notice. This Yubatake in the center of Kusatsu town is the natural hot spring, also known as onsen, that sources the area's many ryokans and public baths. First off though, I'm changing into a yukata, which is fashioned like a kimono but made of cotton instead of silk, something like a bathing robe. Ooh, I know it's raining, but that doesn't matter because in Kusatsu, they take their bathing to another level. They partake in something called a jikanyu, which means quite literally to bathe for an extended period of time. So I've disrobed, got a yukata on, strolling through town towards the onsen, and of course I'm going to try to take that jikanyu to another level. The special thing about Kusatsu Onsen is that here, the ladies dance and sing as they perform yumomi, which is done to naturally reduce the bath's temperature without using cold water. What these beautiful ladies are doing is a ceremonial dance as well as a yumomi. Now, the yumomi actually is when they get these giant paddles and stir the water so as to cool because when it comes out from the source, it can reach temperatures of about 95 degrees, and that's definitely not bearable to human contact. The waters of Kusatsu Onsen contain a natural bath salt called Yunohana, which creates a thin layer of membrane over one's skin when they enter the bath and make the water feel cooler to the touch. Right, these are quite heavy. Okay, she's taking me through the motions. The master. But I think the more you splash, the cooler the water gets. Oh. Oh. <laughs> because of the yumomi process, along with its yunohana content, the water here feels somewhat soft and different from onsens with water cooled down by addition of cold water. Oh yes, nearly there, nearly there. Just a few more meters now. I've had trial by yumomi. I've been walking around town all day, but I've reached my destination. This is one of the top three onsen in the whole of Japan. And I think I deserve it. I just wish I brought my loofah. I learned that I was supposed to splash some of the onsen water over my body before actually entering. But I guess the water was too inviting and I got overexcited. This is heaven on earth, I gotta tell you. I hope it looks as good as it feels because undescribable. I think the next time you see me on this program, I'm gonna be looking like a shriveled up old prune. You know what? Doesn't matter, because that's how they roll out here. Oh. Ah, this certainly is the life. It's time for me to up my pace here in the town of Minakami, the rendezvous point for me and a friend of mine. Rested and ready to take on the day, come to this beautiful little town of Minakami. Loads of lush greenery, beautiful mountains. I just have to find Marie now. Former Miss Japan Marie used to come to Kuala Lumpur a lot as a reporter. She's interviewed big stars like Jeremy Renner and Tom Cruise. Marie and I have a history of bonding over adrenaline-filled activities, so I'm expecting a supercharged day with her. 
I've read that Minakami is known for its superb ski resorts, but it's not winter, so I'm not sure what Marie has in mind. So are you going to tell me exactly what we're going to be doing? Yeah, we're going to be jumping off this bridge. Off this bridge? Yeah. The bridge that we've just walked across? Yeah. Into that? Yeah, we're going to be and how bungee is jumping. Be? We're bungee jumping? Yeah. I actually chickened out before, so I'm only going to do it if you will. So you're depending on me mm -hmm. to throw myself off this perfectly good bridge yeah. so you can do it? Yeah. Now I've gone bungee jumping before, but being with a newbie like Marie reminds me of the intense trepidation that comes before taking the plunge. The apprehension especially kicks in when we sign the indemnity forms and go through the safety briefing. But hey, if Marie is game, I am too. So who wants to jump first? Marie is no, no, up no, for the no, challenge. No. You're no. <laughs> you said that you no, would go first. going to go first. I have to go first? Yeah. What happens if you chicken out and then I'm left with the ball? I'm going to jump unless you do. Really? Yeah. The Tone River flowing underneath sure is a sight to see. I'm busy re-evaluating my life decisions at the moment. Well, too late for me to back out now. Wanda! Wanda! My head has so much blood. Rushing to it right now. I thought my eyes were gonna pop out. What a beautiful place to do it. My only concern now is that Marie's gonna chicken out. Marie, you're next. Oh God, oh God. Are you ready? No, but I'll jump anyway. Here we go, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, bungee. Can we do that again, please? No, it's okay. I'll jump. No one's ever died? Okay. Two, one, bungee. Time. I saw! <laughs> what was that? You counted and then what happened? I was like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. You froze up. Yeah. As they say, you never know what you're capable of until you push yourself to the limits. Banzai for Marie and me. They also say that once you've had a taste of that adrenaline surge, it's hard to stop. There's plenty of stuff to do here in Minikami. In the winter, people come here to go skiing. There's obviously the white water rafting, the bungee jumping, which we've ticked off. But what we're going to do is some canyoning. Canyoning is basically doing a body slide down the rapids, and there are three main styles to do it. On your back with arms crossed in front. On your back with hands behind your head. And the Anpan Man, which is a Superman-like position when you're lying on your front. I'll tell you this, canyoning is now one of my favorite extreme activities. And that was such a brilliant way to spend the day. <laughs> oh my god, did you have fun? Yeah, it was so much fun! Oh, I thought you were gonna chicken out again, yeah, but wow! Good You're so brave! That is so amazing. Much fun after I oh, this water is so refreshing as well, isn't right? it? Oh, Minakami. Love it. The weather looks iffy now, so I'm guessing I'm not about to dry off anytime soon. Terrible weather, absolutely nasty weather. Marie's ditched me, I'm left to camp in my own in this. But you know what, I don't mind because it's gonna be my first time here in Minakami camping. So uh, I'm gonna revel in it. I'm gonna get some sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning. Yesterday evening's horrid weather has thankfully passed, so I'm getting on the train to meet Miss Ditchy McDitch herself, Marie. Rough night last night, but I managed to survive. Just arrived here at the Tobu Nikko station in the Tochigi prefecture. Now, Marie said she's gonna make it up to me for ditching me, but wow, she has to prove herself today because I think I still have some wet underpants. Marie? Oh, good morning! Hey, right? Yeah, you? Oh, good. A couple of eye bags because it was horrible weather, I've got to say. Oh, right, you were out camping. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't remember because you were in the hotel room sleeping in so a nice warm bed. I'll make it up to you, though. 
Okay. What was I'm your plan? I'm taking you somewhere great. It's called Nikko Toshogu. It's one of the most famous shrines in Japan. Okay. We're working towards getting a better relationship back. All right. Up until the Meiji period in 1868, places of worship in the country typically contained elements of both Shintoism and Buddhism. As it is, Nikko Toshogu is one of such iconic shrines. Henry, this is the priest. He's going to tell us about Nikko Toshogu. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. I've got a lot of questions because this place seems so, so busy, so popular. I mean, there's a load of school children here. What's so significant about the, uh, the shrine? As the last shogunate in Japan, the Tokugawa clan was primarily responsible for setting up its government in Edo, which is known today as Tokyo. It was during the Edo period that the shogunate bore ruling power, surpassing that of the emperor in Kyoto. As per Shinto practices, visitors are asked to perform an act of cleansing impurity called misogi before entering the shrine's main area that is marked by its gate. This gate is known as the torii, which symbolizes the segregation between the profane and the sacred, or simply between the land of the living and where the gods rest. Now I've got a question about this place here because this looks absolutely beautiful, but why is it so intricate? This is the ご創建になりました。ご祭神徳川家康公、おじいさんにあたるんですけども、大変数計されてたんで、その数計の年からこのように綺麗に作りました。あら、いい家康公の魂、御霊がお祭りをされてる。And so what do the pictures being the founder of the Tokugawa Shogunate, Ieyasu surely has earned this enviable final resting place here in Nikko Toshogu. I reckon I would have loved to have been around to see his grandson, Ie Mitsu, conceptualize this magnificent tribute. Interestingly enough, Marie tells me there is a way we could both live out that fantasy. Roughly set in the period between 1603 and 1867, history comes alive in this park where its highly interactive and convincing reenactment of the last days of the shogunate. Speaking of which, I can hardly pass on the chance of roaming the Edo streets as a shogun. Marie and I observe judgment being passed by Toyama no Kinsan, the legendary Sakura tattooed town magistrate who goes undercover to capture villains and uphold justice among the people. My fair maiden and I taking a stroll around what I by now have convinced myself is the land under my rule when a commotion in the streets piques my interest. Now this lady here is known as an oiran. Now she is the cream of the crop, much like a geisha, but unlike a geisha, she gets to choose what she does at her own discretion. So if she doesn't like you, she doesn't give you any service. It's hard not to imagine yourself being in the Edo period at this wonderland, what with various activities to try out, including the Yaba archery. The Shuruken Training Hall. And the quirky Koga Ninjri Mystery House that has gotten Nari and me topsy turvy. Oh, yeah. it's hot. As much as I love being a shogun for the day. Oh, it's really hot in these outfits, I tell yeah, you. Yeah, I'm going to take you somewhere modern where we can go in clothes. Back to reality? Yeah. I like that idea. Internet. Videos of cats. And out all of sorts. the Edo period. So, out of the Edo period, we get, and to present day Tokyo, we return. Marie and I venture for light refreshments to one of the signature cafes that is prevalent in modern Japanese culture. Once primarily catered to the male otaku demographic, maid cafes now attract women and couples alike and have become a point of interest for visitors to Tokyo. Okay, okay, brilliant. 
Um, I'll just have a coffee. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll have an orange juice. Yes, I'll make it for you. Wow, that is really unique. Yeah. So why do you enjoy living around、um, Tokyo? Well, Tokyo has a lot to offer. I mean, I don't think you've seen that many made cafes overseas. No, I don't think I've ever been to one. Right? And we have a really deep otaku culture. Yeah. Mine doesn't taste like great. I need, I need more of a, I need a, I need a tasty spell. Then, I want to do it together. But, if I like it, if you 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 like it, Marie's insights on Tokyo give me some new perspectives about this great city, but it's getting late. It's time for Marie and I to say part ways until the next time we embark on more extreme and imaginative adventures together. Ah, thing of beauty! Look at that. And、you know what? The trip on the Shinkansen was the tip of the iceberg for me. I think Nori and Marie both said that I should visit the railway museum, which is called Tetsudo Hakubutsukan. Now here is where I'll be able to feed my growing obsession with everything to do with the rail world. I'm off to Omiya today, which is a ward in Saitama Prefecture, just on the outskirts of central Tokyo. Opened in 2007 by JR East, the Railway Museum is the hub for everything to do with Japan's illustrious history in railway advancements. There's a wealth of information in this museum, and luckily for me, all-round train expert Araki-san is with me to give me all the in-depth details I want to know. Araki-san, when did this train come into service, and and what was it actually used for primarily? This was when the railway was first opened. The first train was used for transporting goods from Japan to Japan. The first train was used for transporting goods from Japan to Japan. The first train was used for transporting goods 1号機関車というふうに私たちは呼んでいますでこの機関車は旅客列車も貨物列車も引っ張りました So high Imagine the conductor right at the top there looking down on everybody So this is the C57 Now why was this such an important model in the locomotive history in Japan? この蒸気機関車は1940年に作られたんですが旅客列車用に早く走るためにですね作られた機関車ですでこの機関車は日本の蒸気機関車の運転の最後を飾った機関車で1975年に日本の北海道で最後の運転をやっていますさようなら運転をやっていますそれを記念するためにこの博物館に持ってきて展示をしています This is like the dying breed of the generation of locomotives Ah,、uh, the holy grail of all Shinkansen Zero series, this is the birth of everything fast in Japan, isn't it? Let's try one of these out Oh, not so bad. Pretty comfortable.、Uh, so, actually, how many Shinkansen have there been today? 全国日本全国の新幹線を含めまして、もうすでにリタイアしたものを含めますと16種類でありますね。So for a lot of people, Shinkansen is the epitome of how technologically advanced Japan is. So why is it so popular around the world? 日本の新幹線はたくさんのお客様を安全に、正確に、迅速に。しかも快適にですね輸送するという目的で、えー、作られております特にあの、えー、安全についてはですね開業から50年経った今も一人もの死者も出していませんこれはですねあの世界の鉄道から日本の安全性が注目されているということですね Araki-san may be the museum deputy director now but I'll bet his start as an engineer was what imbued his passion for trains From a simulator of a Japanese train, I graduate to driving the real thing. Well, sort of. This is Choo Choo Train Station come in. This is Choo Choo Train. We are arriving at the station in about 10 to 20 minutes. 
by the speed of this train because it is a very slow, slow moving train. So actually the train system in Japan is one of the safest systems in the whole world. Hardly any crashes, a very good rate. And you can see when we, when we actually go in, it slows me right down. No matter how hard I'm pulling down on that throttle, the ATC system kicks in, we're going down to 45, we're reaching the back end of another train, and it will automatically stop. The Railway Museum is definitely one of my favorite visits in this trip so far, as it leaves me satiated with an impeccable surge of know-how about the rail world. So much so that I splurge a bit on a Shinkansen ride for my trip back to the capital. Also because I'm in a rush to get the rush of doing all things Tokyo. Sing my lungs out at a solitary karaoke replete with state-of-the-art audio systems that make me feel like a legit rock star? Check. Oh, pretty cool! This one here? Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the photo booth treatment for photographic evidence of my trip with enhancements to make me look better than ever? Check. Look at how many people are crossing this road! This is probably one of the busiest intersections in the universe, the very famous Shibuya crossing. Thousands upon thousands of people crossing at the same time every single day. It's a miracle to actually make it to the other side in one piece. But it actually makes you feel like a very small fish in a rather large pond with extremely strong current. I know it's still early in my journey, but my adventures in Kanto have been a cornucopia ranging from one extreme to the other. It feels like the only thing you can't do in Kanto is run out of things to do. And now that I'm in one of the greatest capital cities in the world, the possibilities of even more incredible adventures seem unending. I paced myself at the start of this region, but now I'm looking to pursue it with a bang. So I'll see you guys on the other side next week on Welcome to the Rail World Japan. Kari was kind enough to treat me to something very special indeed. This looks like something a 13-year-old would wear to bed. <laughs>